She was taken away from her city. She loved the city, but had no choice. She was told it was for the best. She always does what she's told. After leaving for years, she heard reports of the violence in her city, and she would hear of many killed during, even during celebrations for the Lord. While away from the city she loved, she would even hear people ask her questions about how dangerous the city really was. All she could give was her word that this entire city was not bad this way. Only one small section of the town was to be feared, and the rest of the city was wonderful. But she was away from her city. She could no longer walk down the streets, the ones that made her feel safe, and the ones she feared. She wanted to have that back. She wanted to be back in her city, her home. Her blood ran hot as this town. Her blood ran as hot as this town, and her pulse matched the rhythm she felt in her home. Her blood pressure rose ever since she was taken away, and she couldn't get herself in sync. So she made a point to come back after a year and a half. The people changed, but the pulse of the town stayed the same. So she would go to her old stomping grounds, and although she knew no one by name, she was still treated like she was where she belonged. It broke her heart when they said that she had to go again and she had to leave the one place only to give her soul to give, live out her days away. Uh, another year plus later, she returned once more. And while there, she even found a place where she could worship. And sitting there gave her an inner peace that she hadn't felt in her years away from the city that made her feel complete. It approached the time when she would, they would have to take her away again. So she returned to her sacred place she had just found and tried to come to peace again before she had to leave. And she couldn't commute. She was so tense and wound up that she had to leave. And anything associated with any religion could begin to help her. So after finding failure everywhere on her last days in the city, while she stopped at a bridge to look beyond the river to take one last look at the city, she then she then saw just then a bearded old man, an old but disturbingly ominous, and he walked over, turned to the city, and stood next to her on the bridge. She did not know this man, and it alarmed her when he started to speak to her. The cry of the city is great, he said, and their sin is very grievous. He said, and she was shocked the stranger spoke these words to her. The entire city is not like that, she said. It's not riddled with crime. I have seen that violence here, he replied, of young men shooting what they claim are enemies, then killing mothers and children alike, he answered. But I tell you, that's not the entire town, she exclaimed. There are good people here, everywhere. It's a wonderful place to see and to be. If it's only in one small area, the old ominous man said, then why is it that as we've been looking downtown, down toward where the police force, the ones who are supposed to serve and protect, why do we look where they shoot unarmed people repeatedly? She suddenly remembered reading the story of a cop shooting an unarmed teen 16 times in the street. Then after one shot made the boy drop to the ground, and it was only the energy from the extra 15 bullets that made the victim even move. The fear gripped her. Maybe her city has gotten worse since she had left. But still, she didn't care. She'd take her chances. This was her home. The old man saw her lost and thought, so he asked her, I believe you said there are good people everywhere here. How many can you name? That is when she finally turned toward him. He was, she was staring right at her, and her eyes were like saucers. I... She panicked. I... She blinked. I don't live here anymore, she finally said. Finally 50. 
Abigail Lynn said, or maybe name five names. He didn't even give her a chance to respond before the old man said, can you even give me one name? Just one, other than you, who no longer even lives here? I don't have to prove anything to you, was all she could answer. This was when the old ominous man stepped closer to her. Young lady, I believe you, he said. And then he took her hand. She didn't know she should run away or try to push him into the river, but her faculties evaded her, and all she could do was stand there, with her eyes wide open. And she held her hand. I, I believe you, he repeated. I'm sure you've seen good here. The city has a colorful past. And suddenly she remembered that past mafia rule over this town, where crime ran the city and mafia employed even her grandfather. And the buildings here are really well designed, the old man continued, which pleased her because she loved the architecture of this town. But even buildings crumble, the old man said, though she thought they'd last longer than the blues music that is another hallmark of this great city. Well, she said, buildings may crumble in time, but the spirits of the soul, the proven and cherished set of beliefs, will endure. Suddenly, her gaze seemed stronger than his. So he said, you are correct, and it is not very often when I meet someone with such a strong set of beliefs. And I want you to stay strong, the ominous old man said, with a sudden caring in his voice and in his face. So this is why I want to tell you, please heed these words. The evil undercurrent flowing through this city, it is not all bad, she interjected. My young lady, he continued, you may be righteous, but the sinners, the sinners infect this town, and I truly believe this city will not survive. And she, after hearing his opinions, suddenly started to tune him up. I, I'm sorry, my lady, the old man interjected, which surprised her, because a word like that is certainly only used when a common man refers to a woman of high stature. I, I was only trying to say, young lady, that I believe you, that I believe this city will not survive. All I can ask is that you vacate the city. Now before it happens. She looked at him, and she thought about how she had to leave again. And the old man started to smile, and his ominous tone seemed to diminish. You truly seem to be a righteous soul, so I trust that you and any of your loved ones, for I, I know that they are righteous too, will know to leave here. I know you say you love this city, but I know you're leaving is the right thing to do. She thought briefly about how she was about to leave, to be taken away again, so maybe it would be best to just agree with this old ominous man and leave it at that. So she said, okay, she'll heed his advice. And he smiled at her, as if he was forgiving her, though she knew not for what. And then he turned to walk away. It startled her, but she tried to think nothing of it as she began to leave, to take her away once again from the city she always loved. She knew they called this a windy city, but it was not for the winds whipping but the long-winded politicians who ruled over the city. The city, the city, the, the ominous old man called so evil, so grievous, so utterly wicked. She packed her things, and as she stepped outside and was about to leave, she had to turn around and give her town one final look. And yes, they say this is the Windy City, but at this one look, the winds picked up, and they were so eerily too violent. It, 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 she looked for something to hold on to, but found nothing, and the trees were immediately uprooted, and sudden cyclones swept the streets, hurtling high-rise bricks and glass through the sky. Concrete flew, and metal spun through the air. <laughs> if, she knew, if she were to know that her demise would coincide with the death of her city versus anywhere on the planet, 
she would think that this, there was actually no place that she would rather be.